What's up guys, in this video we're going to break down seven of the biggest texting mistakes that guys make on Tinder and other dating apps. Alright, so Tinder mistake number one, using long openers and gamey pickup plots. The problem with a pickup plot in general is that it assumes that you're trying to pick the girl up. Thus, she's above you and you're trying to win her, which is not a frame you want to be in. Combine that with something that's long and cringe, you know, it's going to make any girl roll her eyes and probably post to her friend group chat and look at what this guy said, right? So you want to keep your openers short and sweet. You don't want to overcomplicate it and become overly gay. So take a look at this example. Are you a bank loan because you've caught my interest? That's actually pretty witty. But yeah, it has the problems of being a pickup line. Another example, which is much worse, are you good with puzzles because I need help for this problem? It goes like plus 65. Haha, <laughs> seriously though, you're just here for the banter question mark. Like, I don't even understand. So this one is a lot worse. It doesn't even really make sense. If you guys want to figure out what are good openers, then check out our video called Tinder Pickup Lines that actually work. But the premise is, instead of doing a pickup line, you're making a unique observation about one of her photos. Mistake number two putting the girl on a pedestal. So guys do this all the time. They treat the girl like she's so far above them and they have to win her over. Instead, you wanna treat her as an equal or even that you're above her and you're trying to, basically she has to qualify herself to you. And this may sound a little condescending, but girls enjoy a guy who's a challenge. They want a high value guy, not a guy who's lower value than they are. So take a look at this example. She says, I wake up early every day, says, gotcha. You gonna let me buy you dinner or drink sometime or the other boys there in front of me. So this one text has so many problems with it. First of all, are you gonna let me buy you dinner? Like I have to earn the privilege of buying you dinner. Like it assumes that she's so much above him. Or are the other boys in front of me? There's so many other guys who are better than me. You're the prize, wanna win you over. And lastly, he says boys, like he's a boy. Like, no, this text is fucking atrocious. Then she doesn't respond. Uh, she, he says, hey, how's it going? Hey, hope you're not just, not to just message me. I don't even understand what that means. Well, I took another girl to dinner in your place. Well, it was mess. She was not down to earth at all. So this is also, he's making the mistake of complaining to her about another girl. You never want to be complaining about women or anything in general to girls when you first meet them. So yeah, definitely don't do that. Then we got Tinder mistake number three, premature and suboptimal closing. So out of all these mistakes, I would say this is the most common one. I would say well over half of the guys, you know, in the pickup community and just guys in general make this mistake. So suboptimal closing means you just close in a very suboptimal way. The optimal way to close, which I describe in other videos, like five steps to setting up a date, is to first soft close. So this would be something like we should get together sometime soon. Then you figure out her logistics, something like what's your schedule like, and then you hard close. Once you know her schedule, you would say, cool, let's do Friday night, say nine o'clock, right? So this is a rough example. It doesn't always go like these, but generally these three steps, you know, need to be followed in some format. The problem is guys like to skip step and they go straight to step two or three right away. So, you know, a guy will be talking to a girl, it's going good, and he says, hey, what are you doing tomorrow night at nine o'clock? Let's grab drinks. This asks her for a lot. She might be down to meet up with you. She likes you, but she's not free tomorrow at nine. But now she has to say no to you, right? And girls typically don't like to say no, so they might put it off and not text you back. Then it becomes awkward because she didn't text you. What if you get bought at her and you get mad at her? So you can see suboptimal closing has a series of problems to it. Take a look at this example. So they're just talking. She says, I prefer honesty over anything. I'm glad you said that. You're definitely my type of girl. What are you doing on Saturday? So. Definitely is too strong a word there. Like he's also kind of putting her on a pedestal. Mm, nothing that I know of. What about you? I'll be spending my Saturday evening with you and a bottle of whatever champagne you choose. What time is good for you? And then she doesn't respond. I know almost everything is closed, but we can order sushi for my favorite restaurant, Uber Eats. Are you cool with that? So this is just, you know, he's putting her on a pedestal, but it's also bad closing. So when she said, I prefer honesty over anything, I probably would have said, yes, honesty is important. We should get together sometime soon. Get her to agree to the general idea of meeting up with you before you go into the logistics. Kind of mistake number four, being too platonic and friendly. I see this all the time. Guys just want to play it safe. They don't want to risk it. And they just stay extremely platonic, never show sexual intent. So take a look at this example. She's like, I've always wanted to be in medical sales. I do sales here and there's construction, which is exhilarating. Yeah, nothing more exhilarating than construction. 
when you get to connect with your clients and make those deals with them. Uh, what company is it? He sends her a picture of like a random kitchen. Granite and cabinets design, remodel the interior houses. My own place is an example. So if a girl is looking at, you know, if someone, a third party is looking at these screenshots, would they think this is a man who's interested in a woman? Or would they think it's like a fucking, you know, someone trying to sell something to a potential client, right? So again, your text needs to have that undertone of intent and sexuality to it, which this guy definitely does not have. Tinder mistake number five, getting butthurt. So this happens quite often as well. A guy, you know, shows interest in a girl, and this usually happens to nice guys, guys who come off really nice, but then when they get rejected or get non-compliance, they get super butthurt and they get triggered. And this is something a lot of, you know, pretty much most girls are aware of, so this is why sometimes a girl will not respond to you, or when you're talking to a girl in real life, and she just says, oh, why don't you add me on Instagram, right? The reason she's doing that is because she doesn't want you to get butthurt and make a scene or flip out at her. So look at this example. His opener is, it's really an honor to have matched with you. You're definitely the cutest girl I've matched with. So this is a really shitty opener. It's an honor to match with her. He's putting her on a pedestal. You're the cutest girl I've matched with. Implies that he doesn't get cute girls and his status is lower than her. So really shitty opener. But then he just double texts her. Jesus fucking Christ, what the hell do you have to say to get a girl on here to have her say something back? This isn't fair. I'm one of the good guys. Damn it. So he gets super butthurt because she doesn't respond to a shitty opener. And even worse, he gets butthurt within less than a day. If you look at the time spans, he's literally just double text her within a few hours. So yeah, sorry that she didn't respond to your shitty opener as fast as you would have liked her to. But yeah, whatever you do, you don't want to get butthurt. And the same thing applies to real life game. Let's say you're on a date and you go for the kiss and the girl playfully gives you the cheek. Now the right way to handle that is to just laugh it off and try again a little bit later. But a lot of guys, what they do is they will get butthurt and they'll make a scene out of it. Once you do that, it's done. However, if you're patient, don't get butthurt and be persistent, then you can try multiple times. Tinder mistake number six, attempting to neg or insult her. So this has become popular since you know um, the game came out. I remember I was personally guilty of this as well. I remember I loved the book, The Game, and I still stand by that. It's a good book, but it should be taken as entertainment, right? Or possibly motivation, not as actual practical game advice. And so I went out to the bar that night and I kept trying to neck girls. I remember I got reactions worse than I ever got. Girls were like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you're being weird or like, why are you so weird, right? So don't neck girls. A lot of girls also in 2021 are aware that negging is a pickup thing. So when you ask most people like, oh, what do you, who are not in the community? Oh, you know, what's, what do you associate with PUAs? They will always say negging, right? So don't fucking neck girls. It's really suboptimal strategy. You take a look at this example. He says, you seems like you're boring, haha. Uh -huh. Using very good grammar, says, I am. I bet that's why you can't reach anything. You probably can't give high fives. So this just reminds me of something I used to do when I was in middle school. And I had a crush on a girl. And I thought that the best way I could get her would be to like make fun of her. And like I will always obviously get rejected. And the same thing happens here. F for effort, terrible nagging, six out of 10. Here's another example. Were you at Barawa Beach today or did I just see your twin? So that's not a bad you know, conversation starter, but watch what happens next. Am I have a twin? I'm an Ahmed today. So I probably would have responded with something like, yeah, uh, she seemed pretty cool. So I have, uh, you know, good hopes for you or for us, right? Something like that. Keep the role play going. He says, maybe it was your better looking twin. So again, he's trying to neg her. Problem is girls are not going to respond to that. No girl wants to be insulted or at least very few girls do. So instead of trying to neg the girl, I recommend that you flirt with the girl and tease her, but there's a big difference between that and nagging the girl. Example number seven, calling the girl out of the blue. This is something a lot of guys are guilty of as well. You know, you're talking to a girl, it's going pretty good over text, and you just randomly call her. The problem with that is quite often she will be busy and not able to pick up the call. Also, a lot of girls are hesitant to talk on the phone because they just get awkward on the phone. I've had multiple girls tell me that. So you never don't want to call a girl out of the blue. What you want to do is set up the phone call over text. You can say something like, hey, want to chat on the phone for a minute or two so give her false time constraint so that, you know, that kind of takes away her concern that, oh, what if this guy is awkward and you have to be on the phone for hours, right? So you want to say something like that, get her agree to the phone call, then you call her. All right, hopefully you guys found this video valuable. Show us some love by smashing the like button, hitting subscribe, and clicking the bell for notification. As I mentioned in previous videos, once we hit 50,000 subs, I'm gonna release the first ever infield of me. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time.